Stuck on the presumption that jocks aren't too bright, Jason Wright has a bone to pick with you. It's too tough to play at this level with all the stuff you have to learn, yeah. all the different pressures you have to navigate, speaking to the media, keeping a public persona, handling coaches, handling different That's personalities. Playbook. The playbook is thick as crud. Um, all of that stuff, you can't be a dummy and survive in this league. While playing football at Northwestern, he had a double major, psychology and pre- Do it again. <laughs> it was challenging. It was very challenging. I look back now and I'm not really sure how I escaped without failing all those classes. He's a self-proclaimed goofball. His mind is in constant motion, but he gets serious when he talks about his Christian faith. He became a Christian after deeply grieving for a college teammate who had died in conditioning drills. This grief really didn't make all that much sense, but what had happened is I really got in touch with how broken my life was in general. Mm -hmm. I had all kinds of sexual addiction, I had a drinking problem, and I knew that I had no way of escaping, and that life and death reality, when it hit me, I was just sad about it. <laughs> and I had no way out, and that's when I came in touch with some people that knew God and knew Jesus, and uh, they told me about the hope that was offered in Him, and it turned out to be real for me. Wright is part of a team of Bible study. There's a core group of guys that's a priority in our lives, and we realize how vital that is to surviving in the NFL that has a unique set of pressures, um, both naturally and spiritually, that we got to help each other navigate. The group recently spoke at a church in Central Phoenix. They were all open and very honest about their struggles in life. Me and my mom was in a Dairy Queen drive through and my dad was uh, strung out on cocaine, and he, he, he asked my mom, could he borrow some money? And that was, the, that was the first day, that's when she told me who my dad was. After I got baptized, it, it, it gave me a, a newness in my heart, you know, and I called my stepdad, I forgave him. I called my father and told him how much I loved him. One day I would have to give an account to God for what I did or did not do in my life. So that's something that she drove home to me at a very young age. Wright concluded the service with a message. I thought I was too bound up. I was way too uniquely messed up to ever be free. I thought maybe it could get better. Maybe I could manage it. No way did I ever think he could really deliver me from my sin. But he can do that for every person in here. That secret thing that only you know about and you're super ashamed about, he can free you from it. And he's the only one who can. Oprah can't do it. Okay, none of these, Dr. Phil, none of these people can't do it, I promise you. It's this very same faith that helps him get through the tough times on the field. That practicing of that faith in the most important way with God carries over to football, especially at this point in the season when we're three and six. And we don't see on the field what we know that we are. But yet, those guys who have uh, developed a lifestyle of living in faith can at this point say, no, I'm still going to stand and believe that we are going to be the team that I know we're capable of being. And at some point, we're going to see that come through. And it's, uh, it's the kind of faith that says it's never too late until it's too late. Here's another guy who's brought new faith, wow. new 18 and